So in this video, I will I will do a sample soil classification, um, both in the MIT and USCS uh, format. And uh, this particular question was adapted from the Highway Material Soils and Concrete uh, text by Atkins, uh, fourth edition. Uh, so specifically in this question, we're presented with the results of a mechanical sieve, and which is a pretty standard uh, lab experiment that. Uh, anyone will do uh, who's taking an introductory course in geotechnical engineering. Uh, so, and uh, so for example, for the 12 and a half millimeter sieve size, the entire soil sample fell through. So that means that nothing was retained. Uh, for nine and a half, 74 and a half grams was retained while the remaining fell through, uh, you know, so on and so forth. So, Typically, what happens when when we obtain results like this in a lab is we determine the the, the passing proportion and we plot the passing proportion against the uh, diameter uh, the, the sieve size or the diameter of the particle size, um, and then we're able to obtain a grain size distribution of the curve, which then tells us what kind of uh, soil sample we have. So let's just start with the MIT uh, format, and then we'll do the USCS. So uh, first we'll determine the passing proportion of each sieve size. Then from that, uh, we'll, we'll, we can plot, uh, like, like I said earlier, the passing proportion against the uh, sieve size, that the diameter size of the particle. Uh, from that, we can read off the graph and determine the percent gravel, the percent sand, percent fines, and then uh, subsequently we can determine the MIT and USCS source classification. So uh, before we can do anything, you know, the first obvious, you know, step that we have to do is just determine the total mass of the soil sample, and this is just by taking the sum of each retained mass for each sieve size. Uh, in this particular case, it turns out to be 807.2 grams. Uh, once we do that, uh, we can determine the passing proportion as follows. It is just the total mass of the sieve sample, which was determined just, just previously. And minus the cumulative retained mass at that sieve size, which was basically the second column in the previous table. And then we, deduct, we divide that by the uh, total mass of the sieve sample, which is 807.2 grams in this particular case. So let's do a sample calculation for the 9.5 millimeter, millimeter sieve size. Uh, it becomes 807.2 minus 74.5, which is the uh, cumulative retained mass at that for this particular sieve size, sieve size sample. And then we, divide by, then we divide it by the total mass of the sieve sample and multiply by 100. This gives us 90.7. 7%. What this tells us physically is that 90.77% of the sample fell through while the remaining was retained. That's that's just is exactly uh, what passing proportion uh, implies. It's just how much of the sample passed through that sieve, sieve size. So one, once we do that, we we obtain these following results. Um, uh, and now that we have the passing proportion, we can plot the grain size. We, we can determine the grain size distribution by plotting passing proportion against sieve size. And often you'll see passing proportion being used synonymously with percent smaller or percent finer. Uh, they all mean the same thing. So, so once we plot this. This is the curve that we obtained, the grain size curve that we obtained. Um, and for MIT, you know, anything that is greater than 4.75 millimeters is considered as gravel. So how do we determine the percent gravel? We simply go to 4.75 millimeters, and then we read up, we read that, we read the graph uh, at the 4.75. Five millimeter uh, point, and, and check its corresponding passing proportion. In this case, it is 63.88 percent. 
but we want greater than 4.75 millimeters. So we have to actually subtract by 100. So in this case, that gives us 36.12. And then um, we determine the percent fines, which is just um, straight up reading uh, what the passing proportion would be at 0 0.075 millimeters. In this case, it's 5.88%, roughly speaking. And then uh, from that, now that we have the percent gravel, percent fines, we can actually take the difference from 100. So, and then that will give us the, the, the that will give us the percent sand, just because by definition, sand is anything in between gravel and fines, right? So it's anything in between 4.75 millimeters and 0 0.075 millimeters. So that would be 100% minus 36.12 minus 5.88, and that gives us 58%. And then recall the MIT taxonomy. So basically at this point, we already have all of our information that we need to classify the soil. So anything that is greater than 50% that is greater than 50 in composition would be in capitals. Uh, anything that is between 50 to 35% would, uh, would contain the and plus the noun. So and gravel and sand and silt and clay. Anything between 35 to 15 percent would, uh, would would we would attach an adjective, so it would be gravelly, sandy, silty, clay. Uh, 15 to 5 would be with some, so with some gravel, with some sand, with some silt, or with some clay. And then lastly, anything less than five percent is just trace of, so trace of gravel, trace of sand, trace of silt, or say, or trace of clay. And you know. Uh, just so you know, silt and clay are grouped under fines. Um, so we apply the MIT, ta uh, MIT taxonomy and the MIT, MIT soil classification is simply sand because sand is greater than 58 percent. I mean, it, it, no, sand is greater than 50 percent at 58 percent. So this means that it'll be in capitals. So we have that. and. The percent gravel is 36.12, which is between 50 to 35, which is why we include and plus the noun, which is and gravel. So we have that. And then the percent fines is actually between 15 to 5, so we say with some fines. It's really as simple as that as far as the MIT classification. And in this particular example, like we we don't even need to plot the grain size distribution to, det to determine the MIT classification because we already have 4.75 millimeters as uh, as a sieve size within that mechanical sieve so we can just work it out from the table alone we don't need to go through all this work and plotting it but um you know i just decided to plot the grain size distribution just to give us a sense of the soil and then also it's just it's actually a good skill to be able to read a grain size distribution curve that, uh, that's something that that is extremely uh, standard uh, as far as this course goes all right, so this pretty much uh, wraps up the MIT uh, classification. Let's uh, move on to the USCS. But before that, I just wanna um, I just wanna take a moment to to clarify that um, in this particular example, it's pretty obvious that the soil sample was a coarse grain soil sample, as in coarse grains means that. Uh, more than 50% of the sample was actually greater than 0 0.075 millimeter than yeah 0 0.075 millimeters. Um, thing is that uh, clay and silt are not um, are not uh, are not uh, distinguished from from the naked eye. Like you, you cannot just uh, separate those two from just looking at it. Uh, the particle sizes for clay and silt are actually way too small. Uh, you could differentiate uh, sand from gravel, but definitely clay, clay and silt you cannot. Um, so when you do the mechanical sieve, you'll, you'll notice that at the last uh, stack of sieves at the very bottom, you'll just see like um, very uh, small sized uh, particles and you won't know the difference between clay and, and silt. The only way to, uh, the, the procedure that you would use in a laboratory to determine, to, to, to distinguish between clay and silt would be to perform a hydrometer test. Um, and 
that'll help you determine uh, how much clay and how much silt there is and then once we determine that you can actually apply the, the MIT taxonomy you can be even more specific and specify how much clay and how much uh, silt there is so clay is always smaller than silt anything less than 0.002 millimeters and silt is anything between 0.075 to 0.002 and that's why the cutoff is at 0.075 millimeters because that is the uh, lowest cutoff for uh, between sand and silt sand is the coarse grain so which we can distinguish from the naked eye and that's why we picked this as the sort of the benchmark <clears throat> excuse me, for uh, for determining what's a coarse grain soil versus a fine grain soil. And, and you know, typically speaking, uh, mechanical sieves only apply to coarse, coarse grain soils because like I said, the, the only way to, to, to differentiate between silt and clay is to actually perform a hydrometer test uh, w because a mechanical sieve will never tell you how much clay and how much silt there is. Well, let's move on to the next example. I'll recall the grain size distribution of the soil sample. So the first thing that we have to do is determine the particle size corresponding to the 60% passing proportion. Determine the particle size to the, excuse me, 30% um, passing proportion and the particle size for the 10% passing proportion, which is what is uh, indicated here by the green lines. So for 60%, it is roughly 2.00 millimeters. For 30%, it is roughly 1.0 millimeters. And for 10% passing proportion, it is roughly 0 0.100 millimeters. So once we have that, um, we can actually determine the um, the coefficient of uniformity and the coefficient of curvature uh, but before we even go there before we calculate these how do I know that this is something that I have to calculate well this is just based on the fact that the percent gravel is for use USCS is 44 percent the percent fines is 5.88 so it doesn't change it's the same as the MIT standard and then sand is anything between 2 millimeters and 0 0.075 millimeters which in this case turns out to be just uh, above 50 percent slightly above 50 percent and notice how for USCS the, the the standard for what is gravel is actually is actually different for, for MIT, it was anything greater than 4.75 millimeters, but for gravel, I mean, sorry, for USCS, it's anything greater than 2.00 millimeters. So you have to remember that um, because, and in many ways, this is actually what differentiates the MIT from the USCS classification in that they define gravel differently as far as where that cutoff is for the particle diameter size. So for 2.0, we just come to the graph we read it and it's 56 percent as as demonstrated by the orange and that gives us 44 percent we have to we have to actually subtract from 100 because we want anything greater than two than 2.0 um, uh, we do that and then we actually what we do know is that we can establish that the 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 majority of the soil sample consists of sand because it's 50 50 percent once we know that we can use this particular table that helps us narrow down our classification so we know that it is roughly more slightly above 50 percent we know that it is it is a sand but we know that it is also Uh, you know, there's, we have to determine the percent fines. Is it is it less than five percent or is it uh, more than twelve percent? Um, in this particular case, five point eight eight percent. I mean, it's not less than five percent, but it's pretty much 
like within that ballpark like i mean 0.88 percent is not even that much of a difference so i mean we're pretty much just like splitting hairs so we can just go ahead uh and ch and and follow this classification criteria where it, the majority of the cell sample is actually sand we have less than five percent fines and then we need to determine the whether it is well graded or poorly graded now this is what we this is when we have to get into calculating the uh, coefficient of uniformity and the uh, coefficient of curvature so that's exactly what we do uh you know uh, for 60 percent passing proportion is 2.20 millimeters that's the diameter size for 10 percent passing proportion is 0 0.133 roughly this gives this gives us 16.54 which is greater than 6 so the criteria for the uniformity uh, coefficient is good let's let's check our curvature um coefficient so passing proportion uh uh diameter size corresponding to 30 percent passing proportion is 1.12 millimeters uh squared divided by passing the particle diameter size for the passing proportion of 60 percent times the diameter size of 10 percent passing proportion gives us 4.29 which is not between one and three that means that it does not meet the well graded criteria this only leaves us one leaves us with one criteria which is poorly graded so the uscs uscs solid classification is simply sp um yeah and that pretty much uh concludes uh, uh this sample question uh again what i'm gonna put emphasis on as far as this question goes is uh making sure that when you are calculating when you are determining the percent gravel uh, for MIT, you use anything greater than 4.75 millimeters, and for USCS, you use anything greater than 2.00 uh, millimeters. Um, yeah, um, I, I will uh, wrap it up uh, at this point, and uh, maybe I spoke a little bit fast in this in this in this video, or you know maybe you couldn't catch anything, or you couldn't catch some of the things that I talked about. Feel free to leave a comment below. And I will get back to you as soon as possible to clarify or answer any of your questions or concerns. Uh, uh, that's pretty much it for now. I uh, will do another video on on solar classification examples. I'll have some, you know, some more interesting and challenging ones in the next video. So uh, in the meantime, um, that's it for now. See you in the next video. Thank you for watching.